Welcome back to the Tool Crib. Today we are going to be talking about the all new Leatherman Arc, which is built on the Leatherman Free P4 platform, though it is a major uh, upgrade to that particular multi tool. We're going to talk about the highs and lows of this tool, things I like, things I don't like quite as much. And we're also going to be talking about an issue that has arisen with this new multi tool that I will say is non exclusive to the new Leatherman Arc, but is prevalent across the entire Leatherman tool lineup now because of a geometry change that they made to the wire and hardwire cutters. And we're going to discuss that a little more in depth in this video as well. For now, let's get into the Leatherman Arc. We'll go through the accessories and then the tool set, and we'll talk about those cutters. So the first thing we want to talk about are the accessories that Leatherman provides with the new Arc. The first of which is the uh, single bit sleeve. Now they only give you nine bits for a total of 18 different screwdrivers. They left out one. <laughs> it just so happens that the one they left out is the T6 T8, which incidentally is the same drivers that you need in order to adjust or dismantle your Leatherman Arc. Now, I guess Leatherman's thinking is that if we don't provide that bit, people are less likely to adjust or take apart their Leatherman Arc. But who knows? I'm not trying to speak for Leatherman. I'm just saying that seems to be their mindset. Uh, one thing that perplexes me with this is the fact that they didn't include a secondary uh, microdriver bit, which will fit in this bit sleeve. And the reason I say that is because the arc actually comes with uh, an additional, or it comes with the microdriver holder. And if for any reason you were to damage uh, or bend it or what, what have you on that microdriver, it would have been nice if Leatherman would have included an extra one. Uh, just in case something were to happen to that. I assume it only costs Leatherman pennies on the dollar in order to provide something like that, but they elected not to. I wish they would have, but you know, that's not uncommon, something like that from Leatherman. The next thing is we're uh, the sheath. Now the sheath on this one is extremely large. So let's get the Leatherman arc in here. We'll set it down inside, close this baby up, and you can see just how much space this thing has left. It's like an inch of gap over the top of the flap here. Now, let's compare that to the Leatherman Free P4 sheath. Let me button this up. Now, this is the Free P4 sheath, and you can see the size difference. Now, I will say that this sheath was specifically designed only to carry the P4, which is the same frame size as the new Leatherman Arc, but it was not designed for onboard accessories. So you don't have the side pouches here, and you also don't have the interior pouches that you get with this one. So as I mentioned, you get a large side pocket and a small side pocket. You get front and back interior pockets. Now that is to be able to add stuff. So if you want to carry a bit sleeve or two, you can still do that and then get the arc in there as well because it has a lot more elastic on the side. This case will actually expand out a lot further than what the original free P4 and P2 sheets did. So the only problem with this sheath is the fact that it is so tall. They could have brought that flap down a lot further, made it a lot more compact, just move the rivet up, put less material here, and that's really all it amounts to. Why they decided that it needed to be that large, uh, I really don't know. It's kind of a one-size-fits-all approach, if you will. Maybe, maybe they're leaning in that direction as a cost-saving measure. Uh, no one really knows. Well, let's get into the tool set of the Leatherman Arc. So the first thing we want to talk about is the clip. Now the clip can be reversed to the other side. They add some secondary holes on the other side of the frame so that you could make this a left-hand carry. Now this is one feature that I've always liked about, I liked it in the free uh, P4, was the fact that you can switch with a little bit of work. You have to take a tool apart, but you can switch this around in order to make this a left-hand carry. And so by switching, the ability to switch this over, and then you can uh, turn this into a left-hand operable tool, which is kind of nice. I, I like the fact that they can do that. I just wish that they offered an option for the 10 or 12% of people out there that need that uh, to be able to set it up left-handed out of the factory so you didn't have to do it after the fact. But again, that would add to cost and time and all that good stuff. Uh, another thing with the frame here, the frame is in a nice silver and black contrasting design, something that I very, very much like. I love that color combination. Now, on the original Free P4, they had this stamp dimpling in here, uh, which gave it a little bit more grip. Uh, it was supposed to be kind of more aesthetically pleasing. I personally never liked this frame uh, for that reason. I just 
it was just a personal taste thing. It's not that there was anything wrong with it. It's just it's not me. I much prefer the smooth frame, though I get the argument that that's going to make the frame a little bit more slick. Uh, but it's something that is fine with me. And I actually prefer this great color combination, silver and black. I think that's excellent. Uh, the next thing is going to be one of the best features to this knife. And that, and th this is really going to add to the cost of this or bring it up to that $230 mark, which is what these are going for. And that's the new MagnaCut steel blade. Now, MagnaCut is pretty new to a uh, pretty new stainless steel on the market. It's been out a couple of years now. Has some excellent qualities and properties. Uh, especially in a, in a multi-tool, very resistant to rust, great toughness, uh, hardness on this with the proper heat treat, you can get somewhere between 60 and 63, which is excellent. Comes with this nice DLC black coating, which just goes along with the theme of this tool. And one of the things when I first showed this to my wife, that was one of the first things that caught her eye was that she liked that the blade was black uh, you know it was attractive the, the whole combination is, is an attractive multi-tool because of that now some people have said that their grind is not coming out that great hasn't come out that sharp mine is very well done uh, on this particular tool i will say that it could stand to be stropped up a little bit it's not quite hair popping sharp but mine came out of the factory extremely sharp and i'm very happy with this particular knife blade uh, the thumb stud edition here is welcome for me I like that much better than I do the, the slotted, uh, the thumb slot. It's, and, and there's a, I, I get the argument that some people don't like that because it's going to interfere if you're using this to slice through things. You could bump against a thumb stud, but it's so far back on the knife. I don't really think that's an issue, and I much prefer the the thumb stud being there for usability. It's just, uh, it's really easy to open. It's a fantastic blade, uh, especially for a multi-tool. And let's just go through these one by one. We have the first thing is going to be the can opener. Now, this is more in the Victorinox style, though it is quite a bit smaller than even some of the smaller Victorinox knives. I don't particularly like this uh, can opener that well. I much prefer the Eagle Claw, clan, uh, Eagle Claw can opener that Leatherman has put on a number, pretty much every one of their other multi-tools. Uh, I wish they would change this out for, for that particular uh can opener because not only using it as a can opener there's other functions that you can do to it especially if you want to sharpen up the tip of it a little bit <clears throat> pardon me you can do a number of other things with that particular style and so i just wish they would change it out that's something that i think they can improve on this tool with the next tool over is well i got them both out that time didn't i is uh the bit holder or bit exchanger now they had to redesign this in order to get into the free frame. It's basically a ground up build on this. And so it's a little different than what you're going to find in wave, surge, charge, you know, a number of others in that the bit sits a little higher in this frame. And because of that it has quite a bit of movement against that spring. It's, it, I don't really see this as an issue though. It's something that I wanted to notate, but when you're using this and you're bearing down on it, it really solidifies in that holder. And so it's kind of a non-issue, but some people, you know, might have, uh, have take issue with that particular the looseness of it uh, when it's in its free state apart from that uh, I I'm really glad that they put this in there because I personally like Leatherman's uh, bit exchanger I like it for the fact that you can either use it with the screwdriver in there or you can add on some of their accessory extensions and this is what I normally do I find myself not using these bits very often just the one that comes in the frame anymore uh, and going with their extension and a Weeha double-sided bits, which are fantastic. And, you know, you carry the one, two, or three, whatever you want to carry with you that you need at all times. And you 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 uh, have several different screwdrivers in one, but with some really fantastic bits, as opposed to the softer bits that Leatherman provides in their bit kits. And before we close that up, uh, next to that, they have this bent piece which they first had that in the Leatherman uh, garage number five, where that is actually designed to hold that bit in place. So if you're using the pummeling surface and let's say you're tapping in a roll pin or something, it keeps that bit from dislodging from the holder, uh, either in pocket or sheath or when you're using that impact surface. And I think that's a, a real attention to detail that Leatherman added to this multi-tool and I'm grateful that they did. 
Uh, that just, it, it's a really nice feature to have on there. The next tool is going to be the saw blade. Leatherman saw blades are always really well done, tapered on the spine so that uh, you're not jamming in the kerf when you're using this to cut on whatever material, generally wood. Leatherman saw blades are always very, very well done. Uh, other side, next tool is the scissors. Now the scissors on this tool are probably, they're one of the best that Leatherman makes. They could stand to be a little longer. You'll notice they sit a little short of the frame the argument here is if they extended those out, they'd have to make them thicker and they wouldn't fit. I don't necessarily buy that. I think they could at least uh, add another 3 16 quarter inch, give those scissors just a little bit more opening, make them a little bit better, even if they didn't take up the whole frame and give you a much better pair. Uh, it's not really that big of a deal because these scissors are fantastic. They cut extremely well through cordage, paracord, cloth, uh, all types of fabric. The only issue that I take with this is that in the design of this, it has this little ramp up. Now, my EDC is the Leatherman Surge, and the Surge makes the best, are the best Leatherman scissors that they make. You'll notice that this one doesn't have that ramp up, but rather the handle is in line with the cut edge. So if you're cutting through cardboard, poster board, something like that, what will happen with these scissors, you'll bump up against that ramp, and you kind of have to rearrange or fidget around in order to keep passing through to make long cuts where with this one it just kind of slips right through there now how often do you do that i don't do that particular task very often uh, but if they could make it a little bit better uh, if they wanted to redesign it but i'm really okay with the scissors they're very fantastic uh, they just they just work and work well next tool is one that is very welcome on this particular multi-tool and that is a proper awl now, the one that came on the Free P4, which we will pull out here, came with a little microdriver bit. Now, this bit can be useful, but I much prefer that the awl not have that where it keeps a nice sharp pointed awl because you can use this for a lot of other tasks. This screwdriver kind of hinders your ability to, it, it doesn't work quite as well as an awl, I guess is how I want to put that. Uh, it still works. I've tested this one out when it came out brand new. I did fine cutting, uh, you know, drilling into wood and stuff like that. So it has a nice sharp edge to it as well, just like this one. It works very well, and it's a little bit longer in this tool than it is in this one. But that screwdriver tip, if they would have made this a sharp point at all, then I would have liked it much, much better. Another feature you'll notice here is that this one comes with the sewing eyelet, where this one does not. Now, the argument here is that if they uh, added that in there, then it would make the tool weaker. You know, my, <laughs> my, <laughs> I don't know, my, uh, uh, my rebuttal to that is, well, the, basically the same thickness. I haven't put a mic or micrometer or calipers on it to check to see what the thickness of those two are. But if they were able to do it on this one, why not be able to put that one in there? It just seems like a, nonsensical argument to me. I think they could have added it. Now, granted, it's not a feature that I use, but for those that bushcraft or, or outdoorsmen who might need that feature, it would have been a pretty simple add. The next thing that they have on this is a wire cutting notch at the base of this tool. Now, I like the fact that they angled it back. And the reason I like that is because when you're using it, if you're angled back like that, it kind of flattens because you can use the spine of the other tools in order to trap the wire. And so I like that. Uh, what I don't necessarily like is I don't think they cut this one right, and it doesn't function that great as a wire stripper. I've tried, this is one of a few tools that I've tried out pretty extensively in the few days that I've owned this tool, and I found it to be a little lacking. Now, I think I can fix this and make it a lot better, but we'll save that for another video as well. Next tool is going to be that microdriver bit that we were talking about. Now, this is reversible, has a little, uh, I think this is triple aught Phillips, and then it has a small flat driver that I don't really use that much anymore. The original Surge came with this, and then when they did second generation, they got rid of it. I thought I would really miss it, and over the years, I, I really haven't. Uh, so I find other tools to be more beneficial than taking up a tool slot. And I think that Leatherman, it's far past time that Leatherman find another way to implement this. It seems to me that it, sh it should be rather easy to implement this into uh, kind of a, a bit 
where they can make their uh, one of these bits as a holder itself that would then fit into the regular uh, bit exchanger or be used in one of the extensions. It's and there you already see them in the aftermarket. So if they can do them in the aftermarket, surely Leatherman can do them. Next tool is another redesign. This one is the pry tool and screwdriver combination. Now, I'm gonna pull the one out from the free P4 real quick. Uh, this is a bit redesigned, uh, specifically with the driver up top. Now, they got rid of the cut edge that came on the original free P4, which was designed for package opening. And really, it worked fairly well as like a box cutter, not a box cutter, but a tape cutter on boxes. If you get packages in, this broke those seals uh, pretty, pretty easily. I don't have a problem with them getting rid of that because now they have that nice all on there. It will also work great as a package opener, has that sharp cutting edge to it. So they've really gone back and made it just a screwdriver pry tool. Now at the base of this, they add in the bottle cap lifter. Bottle cap lifter on here is, it works decent. Uh, they could change the geometry of this just a little bit, but a little bit to make it a little better can opener. But we'll we'll talk about that in a different video as well. And then the last of the interior tools is going to be a tool that I very much appreciate on this, and that is the file. So diamond coated file on this side, edge file, cross cut file, all of which work extremely well. And nice link to this as well. The argument with this one is that this is a tool that would have benefited from having a nail nick as opposed to the slot for the thumb slot. Uh, it would have made a much more effective file, especially on the diamond coated file, you wouldn't be use, uh, losing that, that filing surface. Here's the argument with that, is this tool, for the most part, you've seen me open up everything on here one-handed. That's kind of the theme or the selling point of the free series of tools, including the Leatherman Arc, which is based on that platform where everything can be open one-handed. Now, if you had a nail nick, or if you redesign the frame up here with a nail catch, then you would be detracting from that selling point, if you will. Yes, it would make a better file, but then it would, you know, it would change the, the whole idea of what the free series is about. So I'm really okay with it. I'm just glad they put a proper file in here as opposed to the little nubby file that they had that wasn't even diamond coated on the free P4. Okay, so now we get to the pummeling surface. Uh, so Leatherman, this has always been prevalent in the, in the free series of tools. Uh, when they redesign or when they design the first two, the P2, P4, yeah, P2 is a little different because it's a little thinner, but they've always had this pummeling surface. They're just now, uh, I guess over the years, they've decided that it's okay to tell people that that surface is there to use as a light duty, uh, light duty hammer, if you will. It, I, I don't carry the P4, so I haven't really used that. I do intend to carry this arc though, and I will be trying, you know, see just how much I like that particular feature, but it's nice that it's on there. Then we get to open up the pliers. And on the back side, we have just just back, uh, not, not against the, the uh, back of the pliers, but just one notch back, you have wire crimpers, which are fairly effective. I've used them, I've tried them out on the, on the free P4 and P2, and they work pretty well. Needle nose, regular pliers, and now we get to the hard wire and wire cutters. Uh, this has changed in geometry, and I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're going to get the free P4, which is an early version, and pull this out and compare these two cutters. Okay, so I'm going to take these out, but before I do, I wanted to talk about the issue that we're seeing with this. Now, Joe from Ink and Iron is the first one that, that notated this, and what he was doing was using the Leatherman Arc to cut a simple coat hanger, which is pretty soft steel. And what happened was when he went to set it and crimp onto it, it actually it actually uh, broke out one of the one of the cutters. It flaked off. Now I've seen people that commented on his video and other videos that that is a wire stripping function because what happens is on the very back of these cutters it has a curved edge to it where on these, which we'll show you in a minute, are more squared off. I can absolutely tell you that those are not wire strippers. Those 
I don't know why they, they design changed it, but Leatherman themselves does not call that out as feature. They are definitely not even close to sharp enough to be used as wire strippers. They are most certainly not wire strippers. So let's get the first one out here and set this to the side and we'll pull the original free P4 one out here. And we'll highlight the differences between these two. So let me, uh, I'm going to put a picture up here that, that, you know, really focuses in on this. But what we see here is that the one on the free P4, like I mentioned before, is more squared off at the end. So when it's in the pliers, it's very tight to the frame and doesn't provide any gap there. So it really works well as a, as a hardwire cutter where the ones on the new arc and this is, I want to say this, this is not exclusive to the ARC. What's happened is Leatherman is actually putting these cutters in all of their multi-tool lineup now. Um, there's, there was a design change. I, I can't imagine that it wasn't intentional. And there is a theory going around that Leatherman intentionally did this to basically create a weak link in the system where the cutters would actually break before someone was able to get enough force on the pliers in order to damage the pliers, which then Leatherman would have to warranty, where these parts are replaceable, and so these are not under warranty. These are for the customer to pay for. I don't, I'm not trying to say that Leatherman intentionally did that. I do not know. But what I will say is that theory has merit, at least in my opinion. So... <sighs> Why they did this, I really don't know. But what's happening is when you're using hardwire in those cutters, because of that curve down there, the wire will actually get trapped on the back side and it gets so much force against it. And it's not giving you that pinching motion where you got the two squared off halves that would cut into that wire. Now, I've used, with my Leatherman Surge, I've used these cutters to cut all kinds of stuff, including coat hangers for just whatever. I've cut a lot of TIG wire with these too, and they go through it with absolutely no problem and absolutely no damage. Why Leatherman decided to change that is still beyond me. And I want to highlight this. Leatherman, I actually contacted them, and they sent me more of a generalized email out. And we're going to break here, and I'm going to read that to you to show you what their response was to this issue. So I want to bring a flashlight in here so we can kind of get a better idea of what's happening here. You can see that at the back of these pliers, by shining a light through there, it creates kind of that diamond edge there where you have the two backs that curve out and thereby provide that gap. So if we look at the original P4, which mine is one of the early versions, so it has the straight uh, wire cutters. You don't have that just at the very, very back of the tool, but it's small enough that you can't get a wire trap back there. And then here's the Leatherman Wave. And finally, my EDC, the Leatherman Surge, none of which have a problem getting through hard wire. So Leatherman's email, uh, which I called to talk to him about, you know, basically if they could provide some answers on why this was done on and, and what their intention was to do about it. So in response, I got this email. It says, thanks for sharing your experience with your Leatherman Art tool. We are currently we were currently made aware that a limited number of ARC users have noted their replaceable wire cutters don't meet their performance expectations. Our engineering team immediately tested our current inventory to diagnose the cause. Through our test, we found that some lots of replaceable wire cutters on the ARC did not meet expectations. We take our quality standards seriously and we'll be offering replacement parts to customers who have experienced these issues. Email your address and other contact information to social at leatherman.com and we'll work to send out a new set of replacement wire cutters. Thank you for trusting Leatherman, and we look forward to connecting with you to ensure that your ARC experience surpasses your expectations. Now, to me, I, I was... I will say when I received that email, I was hopeful that Leatherman was taking this issue very seriously. And uh, But honestly, in my opinion, that's more of a let's shut them up email response. And the reason I say that is because... Uh, again, Joe from Ink and Iron actually did an update video this morning that he had sent his Leatherman. Actually, Leatherman had contacted him and wanted to see what was wrong with his cutters. He sent the tool in for warranty issue, obviously, 
And they sent it back, but when they sent it back, they sent it back with the exact same cutters. They changed absolutely nothing. And I will say again that this is not specific to the ARC, but it's been coming out for months now in all of their multi-tool lineup. So it's frustrating to me. Now, some people will say, and I've heard these comments too, well, the, you know, these morons are just cutting cone hangers. Who does that? Well, I can tell you, I've cut a lot of TIG wire, and it's a function that I very much appreciate and use. I use the hard wire cutters on my Leatherman. And the fact that they change this is extremely frustrating to me because if, that's, if that theory holds true, where they're intentionally trying to put a weak link in it to save pliers, if you will, uh, then that is a trust issue with Leatherman. Now, Leatherman has a history of doing some stuff like this, not to that extent, but originally these were made out of 154 CM. And then back in like 2018, I think, uh, they st and they used to market that too, the 154 CM hardwire cutters. Well, then they changed it to premium hardwire cutters, which they don't really give the steel composition. I assume it's a, it's a, it's a uh, 420 mixture of some kind, it's their own special blend. I don't really know and how they're, they, they never said exactly what it is, but I assume it's a flavor of 420. And that was a little disconcerting when they did that. But again, I've never had any problems with what they call the premium hard cutter, hard wire cutters after that. So it, it never really made an issue of it. Uh, why they did this, again, I, I simply do not know. Now, I will say that also another problem that I noticed firsthand in the free and it was one of the detractors for this multi-tool originally. When Joe got his uh, pliers back and he went to go cut, he to test out the cutters, he actually cut the same coat hanger and it didn't break this time. But what it did is when he clamped down on it, uh, you could see the, the uh, it's not quite drop open, but these are very loose, uh, very smooth. And when he cut through there, he had the same problem that I had in the original Leatherman Free P4. And I've never sent these in from a warranty. I did the exact same thing. And the jaws stiffened up so much on this tool that, in fact, there was at one point there was so much pressure that the jaws would open about here and it was it would actually, you could break the handle over uh, before the jaws would open. Now people have said that you can just kind of twist these back and forth and that would cure the problem. I've done that many, many different ways and many different times on this tool and it's never worked. Uh, so maybe they're doing something that uh, I don't know how to do. Uh, but I've never been able to really loosen these jaws back up. Now, it's not unheard of from Leatherman to have stiffness in jaws, but usually what you'll get is you'll get them tight out of the factory and then over time they loosen up. I've, the only one that I've ever had trouble with where you're cutting where they operated very smooth because these originally were super smooth. Then I cut that first hard wire with them and they instantly became stiff like they are now. That happened to Joe with the arc when he got it back. He showed how it was extremely smooth to open. As soon as he cut that hard wire, though it didn't cut the cutters this time, it jammed the pliers. So this is, to my knowledge, the only tool that's ever happened to was in the, the free platform pliers. Now, I don't know what inherently makes them different that it causes that issue, but it's, I thought they had long addressed that, but apparently it's not quite fixed. I'm, and there's a simple fix for it, and they've done it. They've already done it in the Leatherman Garage Number no. 5, where instead of a pivot, uh, instead of a rivet here, they put in that, that machine screw and nut combination where you can make adjustments to the plier head yourself in order to get that tension just right. Now with that garage number five, it was actually spring loaded. So it, in this tool, it wouldn't be spring loaded, but you could very easily service it, re-lubricate it and everything, get that tension just right. And I would assume that that would completely eliminate that, that problem. Now I wish they would have done it on this tool, especially considering the high price point of this tool. Of course, then again, that would be justifying to make it even higher price, but when you're considering a very premium tool like this, you would think that they would do their absolute very best and add their absolute very best features to that tool in order to market it to the public. Now, there are a number of things that I like about the free frame. Uh, 
and specifically about the Leatherman Arc. The first is going to be that knife blade. Love that. And while I haven't necessarily opened up everything one-handed in this video, all this tool is one-hand operable. Now, some are more proficient at this than I am, but it is a nice feature and it's a nice selling point that you have all those tools that open one-handed. You can open those up, separate them out, pick what you need, put them back, including the pliers, easily separated, flip them over, lock them in place. You can even close this thing down one-handed with a little finagling. And so it's a very nice feature. It's a real positive point to this tool. A couple of things that I've always not liked, though I'm starting to soften my stance a little bit on the magnets, uh, because I'm always looking at things from the most extreme use situations in my job. And the vast majority of people are not going to be using a multi-tool the way I use it, the, the abuse that I put it through. So actually, I think they're going to be fine. Uh, well, they've proven to be fine over the last four years or so. So while it's still an issue for me, I understand that it's not an issue for you and you shouldn't, you shouldn't base uh, whether your decision to buy this based on the magnets themselves because they do offer some nice features. Now, a couple things that I don't like about it. I never have liked how loose the frame is, how much you can move it. It just doesn't instill confidence when you have something like the Wave, which you can still move, but it takes an awful lot of force to move it, even a fraction of the movement that you'll get out of the free frame. So that's something that I haven't necessarily liked. The next thing that I don't like about this is that because of the protruding uh, tool releases here, if you're really crimping down on something, you, it, it digs into your hand. Now, I won't say that it's cutting, but you can see it's already, well, it might have gone away now, but if you're digging into it, it actually indents my palm there. So you feel it. It's kind of a hot spot, though I will say that it's not sharp edges, and uh, but it's something to note. And it, this is why I'll never consider this tool a very he heavy-duty tool, if you will, hard-use tool. The ergonomics on a surge and a wave are actually better, but the user experience is better on this tool with all that one-handed opening uh, so it's you gain something you give up something to gain something and it depends on what you value most as to which route you're going to take in in total though i like this tool i like it a lot i think the tool set on here is fantastic though i do have opinions on how they could actually improve this tool set a little tweak here a little tweak there make it a little bit better but as a general rule i like this tool i don't know that i can recommend it just yet though especially for the price of this tool. Now, the magnet cut is very nice, but until these the plier issue is fixed, and again, this is not exclusive to the Leatherman Arc, but across the board now, uh, it's going to be hard to recommend this if Leatherman doesn't go back to what they the, the type of cutters they had before. Um, these I use that feature a lot, actually, more than one might think, uh, cutting all kinds of different hard wire, especially TIG wire. And so I value that very much. And if these cutters are not going to hold up to that, then it's taken Leatherman stock down quite a bit, in my opinion. Hopefully, Leatherman addresses this. I think this is something that they just can't gloss over. When the Bond came out, there was an issue with the knife blade being loose. And their fix for it was just to tighten up the screw a little bit on the pivot. And that's, quote unquote, fixed the issue. Uh, that's not a fix. That's a band-aid is what that is. And it, I hope that they don't have the same approach to these wire cutters because this is a major, major issue in my personal opinion. Now, if they fix that, then this is an outstanding tool. If I had to sum up my thoughts on this tool, uh, my opinion on this tool, it would be that if you can afford it, if well, once they fix that issue, if you can afford it, then I don't think you'll ever regret buying it. My name is Ben. You've been watching the Texas Tool Crew. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you in the next one.